Hi everyone! I am now ready to sit down and listen to another band which I've never heard before but which many of you have mentioned time and time again in the comments on my channel from fairly early on. So this name Opeth is starting to sound familiar even though I've never heard any of their music. That will change in a few moments. Since I have been reading your comments I have a little idea of what this band is about. I understand that they are Swedish and that they started in the 90s. I'm getting more interested in the dates of when bands developed simply because I'm going through this history series with Carl as well and and I'm beginning to place things in context. So Opeth is Swedish and they started in the 90s and so it's a European uh, metal rock band. I also understand that they incorporated a lot of different influences into their music. Everything from progressive to folk to classical to blues to jazz as well as um, some influences from death metal. I don't know how they've done that. Uh, that list could be come out sounding like a whole tossed salad that was thrown together with all the leftovers from the fridge or it could come out sounding absolutely amazing or anywhere in between. But I'm going to have my ears open to see how they use these different influences if it shows up in this piece of music. I am listening to Windowpane tonight. So uh, let's just dive in and see how it goes. Jazzy. to me because I was thinking if it's metal it could be kind of very aggressive but all of these other jazz influences are softening it a lot um, the the blues influence I can hear in that really expressive guitar melody line it's really quite singable. I could imagine it being sung. And the voice itself is a soft sounding voice, at least so far. And then of course the, the chords that are being played, they kind of soften the edges a bit. Of course I hear this um, very dominant, prominent percussion, but it, it all has a sort of mellow, gentle feel in spite of that. So that that's that's really surprising to me. Let's keep going. Might be waiting for someone. Might 
effect where one set of instruments is is making a statement and then another set is coming in and echoing it just a short bit later let's see if I can show you this on the screen <clears throat> um, yeah so we have here is one line where it's going bom, bom, bom. and then here it's stacked on top same thing Bum, 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 but it enters halfway through when the first one has not completed. And that's how we get that really nice um, echo layered effect. It's nice. singing gets the way through. Okay, something's coming. Ah, now you hear sort of a walking face. This face here is stepping up to take some Line the light, shall we say? Is that funny organ in the background? Back to this 
that we heard at the beginning. just been enjoying hearing the different different sections of the piece pass by and the different things coming flowing from one to the other it's it's interesting to see how they handle how, how they're taking all these different elements and I have to say that I think they're doing a pretty nice job of it I mean it's it's coming up with a nice colorful um, multifaceted end result which kind of pulls you into it a bit. It it makes you want to sink into the sound a bit. And and I like that. And I know many of you have said maybe not I don't remember if you said specifically about this band or this piece, but but you have often said you will find more interesting more complex time signatures and rhythms and stuff like that in certain bands and certain groups. I like interesting and variety and dynamic, but not for its own sake. And so, of course, there have been time signature changes happening in this piece and, and the rhythm shifts and this happens and, and that happens. but. But I'm not just looking to see that something there is there. I'm listening to see how does it feel and how does it, how does it sound and how does it end up creating a very, hopefully, a very nice end product. And um, so in, in one sense, I don't really care if there are time signature changes or not. Because in their on their own, I don't care. But what I care about is how does the music move me and how does the music um, engage me? And you are right that sometimes time signatures, time changes, rhythm changes are a big part of that. Not always, but sometimes. And in this piece, they do handle these rhythmic changes um, in a in a nice, shall I say, unobtrusive but engaging way. I, I like the way that you begin to feel like you can move with it and it settles into a sort of a rhythm, a groove. But then, instead of just staying there, we get to go somewhere else and we get to try something else. And, and it carries us through these different moods, these different shifts in the in the feel of the piece and that I do enjoy because it is it is musically rewarding and so I just I, I was thinking of that as I was listening here because it's something that I've been wanting to say for a while I'm not just looking for technical prowess or or you know the most fantastic inventive um, thing musically but I do enjoy seeing how the different elements are used to create something very enjoyable in the end and so that is one of the things that features here in this song there have been some time signature changes along the way which have helped to contribute to my enjoyment of the piece even though I say I don't care if there are or not anyway um I just wanted to say that now, um, but let's get back to the music and see. I hear that we, are, we have returned to the same rhythmic and harmonic setup as at the beginning. So probably, let me just check my... Yeah, I see also on the, on the sound stripe that we are nearing the end, but I wasn't even paying attention to that. I felt because of the way the music was returning to what it had been doing at the beginning, that probably we're coming towards the close of the piece. So let's just see how it finishes up.
really settled into this for a little bit. Holding loneliness in the eye. And since I mentioned time signature changes, Skin as the voice enters, scars. it changes. His hand is waving a goodbye. There's no response or action return. There is deep prejudice in me. I also like how there's this sound in the chorus, which, where do I place it? I place it in sort of a folk context. Well, actually, the, the voice itself, the t quality of the voice itself is kind of a folk tone quality. But then in the chorus, we end up with this harmonization happening which is primarily built off of sixths. Um, I don't want to get too technical here, but that's basically six notes apart. So one, the, one voice is singing up here, number six, and then the other voice is singing the sixth note down, or the first note from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is how we get that harmony. And if you listen, you can hear that, that Every time one voice changes, the other changes. So most of what they're singing remains at the same difference, same distance apart. Now, of course, it's going to change a bit because sometimes that interval doesn't sound great. It has to do with harmony rules and all that stuff. And if you're interested in that, you can always check out my Coffee and Patreon because I am putting a course out there on music theory, which is going to get into the rules of harmony and how we get sounds, how we know how to get the sounds that we're looking for and how to write them, create them, recognize them, identify them, all that wonderful stuff that I love so much. Um, but anyway, so you will see and you will hear that the voices don't always stay at this interval, but primarily um, they're sitting at a sixth, which is a very sweet sounding interval, distance between, between parts. And it is yet another one of those things in this music, which even though percussively we might say that this is quite hard, maybe, but sonically, overall, the effect is not so hard. It's not aggressive. And it has to do with not only the choice of, of tone that the instruments are producing and the voice and all of that, but also the choice of harmonization and even the rhythms, as I said, the the jazz rhythms or the blues style bending the notes um, that we heard in the guitar, those all soften the edges and, and give it a bit more, um, a bit of a richer sound. At the same time, not a harsh, aggressive sound. So anyway, that's another thing that I kind of like in this piece. It's the way they are using this harmony here. There is deep prejudice in me Outshines a reason inside Skin dreams are written with pain And projected onto the That one was surprisingly enjoyable for me. I didn't expect it because I had this idea in my mind that, okay, it's a it's a metal band, a metal sound, and a lot of the metal I have listened to has been has been quite aggressive. Now I understand that 
metal is a broad field in itself. And um, in fact, in my discussions with Carl, he, we've talked about whether metal is rock or if it has branched and become its own field. And that's up to discussion and so forth. But, but yes, here, I guess from what I'm learning in the history of rock and all of that, I would definitely say that this is, this falls under the rock heading because of all the different influences which passed through rock, such as the jazz and the blues and, and all of those things and, and are found here in a recognizable format, even though it's also progressive metal or is it progressive metal? I think you can tell I'm not hundred percent sure on all the identifications yet, but I'm getting there and I'm enjoying the process anyway. So having said all of that, I am going to spend a little bit of time with the music and do an in-depth video for you. And you will find that here when I publish them, they will both come at the same time on the channel and you can follow the link and we'll dive into the music a bit deeper together and look some more into how these how this music achieves what it does i'll see you soon